Welcome and thank you for joining me. We're going to be turning what was supposed to start off as a simple toilet uh, replacement into a basic bathroom upgrade. So stay tuned. And there goes the cat. So welcome to the kids bathroom. Um, we've got three kids and they have all been working or have all been using this bathroom for the last uh, almost eight years we bought this house. It was built in 2005 and I don't think um, they may have updated a couple things in here. Uh, the, the toilet which started this all, um, you can probably see here in the back, it's kind of been pulled out already. It was, it was leaking here from underneath the, <clears throat> the tank. Um, we had to shut the water off. There's been, it's been having some issues. So turned the water off, we were getting ready to replace the toilet and found a bunch of other kind of issues. The mirror's falling off, um, we've got issues with the vanity that, um, yeah, we're just gonna, instead of, instead of waiting and until this thing falls apart and we have to do it, absolutely have to do it, we're gonna take care of it now, just get it, get it done with. Uh, we won't be touching the bathroom or the the shower tub. That's still it's still d decent, but um, yeah. First things first is to get all the kids' stuff out of here. So that's what I'm going to be doing. You don't have to stick around for that part. So as you can see, we've already removed the the wax ring that was on here, or most of it. Save yourself a little bit of trouble. Just use a, get a good putty knife. Or maybe not a good one, an old rusty one. And it'll help get all that stuff off of there. Molly went ahead and removed most of it. So it's good, you just kinda just scrape it. Yeah, we went ahead and pulled the old toilet out of there. Just because, well, we were like I said, we were planning on just removing just the toilet. The bolts were, or the, the wing nets were so rusty on there, had to get some pliers and pull that off and still it wouldn't work so we had to just completely remove the thing away from the, the entire toilet away from the wall so that we could pull the tank off. So that's what we're, we're going to work on right now. So you're most likely going to get a little bit of a, I don't know, some water coming from somewhere from the supply or something so just have make sure you get like a old towel or something um, and then I don't have a big black garbage bag with me I just got this kitchen bag I'm just gonna put that under and we'll use that to kind of make sure that that water gets all collected in there when we're getting rid of the toilet here All right, so we got that annoying toilet and tank out of the way. Um, so now we can actually have some room to move. And I have my little, my youngest is my videographer right now. Yeah. She's, you know, Molly removed most of the wax ring here. I'm just gonna kind of clean up a little bit around here. Putty knife, an old um, rusty one. It's gonna be the best op option. Um, and my youngest is also learning, so she's sitting here watching us. Yep. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of get as much of this old wax ring as I can. This gets kind of gross, and this one's actually not bad. I've seen, I've seen a lot worse. I don't know if I'm probably not going to be replacing this. Um, I very much despise these because what they did, if you're installing these, don't do this. Um, this is all one piece. So I have my valve and my, my um, hose. Thank you. Yeah. My supply hose is um, all one piece. So if I wanted to lengthen this, which I had to do before, you have to completely 
cut this off, put a new valve on, and run a new hose off of here. And a lot of time, if you have somebody who is, um, like somebody who's installing a toilet for you, they may not install with the existing, the existing hose. Uh, they may require you to install a new valve on your own and then they will use the, the hose, a, a brand new hose. Sometimes they won't use existing hose. So, um, yeah, depends on the installer, I think. We're just removing the doors off of here just to make sure, or just to make it a little bit easier to access all the plumbing and everything. Since we're going to be getting rid of this, I'm saying this now, but... And we're going to get home and Molly's going to say, or Molly's going to go home and be like, mm, let's not replace that. Yeah. Uh, but makes it a little bit easier. Daddy, can you wait? You got it. Good job. See? You did it. So, as you can see, they really love these, um, these valves here. And I don't know why. <clears throat> But we're gonna just shut the water off here. I don't know. Just pop that up. So when you're looking at getting a new vanity, before you purchase one, I would suggest looking to see how these are gonna come through. Because if you see here, can they look in there? So before you pull this out, if I want to keep the plumbing, keep the valves here, um, I'm going to have to cut all of this. So if I'm going to take that valve out, I'm going to have to shut the water, cut the plumbing, pull the vanity out, put a new vanity in, and then put the plumbing around that. So. Just always keep that in mind when you're planning. Just make sure you plan ahead, I guess. So I got the water shut off, opened it up, checked it up up top, made sure that's not still running. So now I can work on getting all of this out of here, but I think probably can't see very well, but back behind is a little ball. Hopefully it doesn't spray a bunch of water. <laughs> oh, speaking of, yes, thank you for reminding me, young lady. So I went ahead and loosened up the hot and cold water. So my first thing I like to do is just disconnect the hot and cold water from the faucet above. Oh, yeah. So now this little Right now I'm just going to remove the trap. I guess it is. Now, these are um, compression fittings. So you don't have to completely take them off. I just loosen them up. And I'm going to take this one off the back. It's going to make install. Hi. start peeling off some drywall. I really don't want to have to do that, but... So sometimes it's good when you get into a project like this and you go, 
did we really need to do this or not? And then you find something and you go, well, we probably should have done this eight years ago when we moved in. So this is a big no-no. <laughs> they hid this by the mirror, if you didn't see that before. So this gap is not supposed to be here. Um, any moisture, there's, there's no, it's not a perfect seam. There's no caulking between the mirror and the vanity here. Um, so there's not a perfect seam. So any moisture is going to end up getting in between the drywall and the vanity. And it's going to, can it has the potential to run down into these cracks here. There's some pretty, pity, pity brig cracks pretty big cracks in this so we ran caulking along this side we ran caulking along here but they they just left the back so molly was telling me that she thinks this was not the builder but the, the last a previous homeowner so um same thing that I, I'm trying to save as much of the drywall. This is going to end up having to be patched, of course. I'm going to try to save the drywall. I've, if you just start pulling this, you're going to pull the drywall. So um, get yourself a nice, nice blade. We, we'll clean this up later. These are the things I'm going to see. I'm going to see if you can see this. Do you see this? This is what we. That wasn't me. No, I, I know. These are the things that we find. And these are the reasons that sometimes it's good just to replace. Apparently we're going to move along to plan fun.
little leftover from. Something. Um, when I was doing the um, fireplace area. sides mm -hmm. okay um, you just cut the paper I like to do a few passes to begin with. I marked the studs. here earlier because I knew if I didn't do it back then when I had my pencil and everything I was gonna forget so I just took care of it then. Like you most of the time do. What's that forget? Yeah. You know what? Not to do, but they're listening to you. They can hear you. Oh. I'm just teasing you. So I like to recess these um, because if they loosen up or anything, they, I don't want them to pop through. We're going to cover all this anyway, but it's just going to be, it is what it is. Um, but um, then I come and take and cover them over. So if you're doing like a whole wall. You don't want these sticking out because they'll pop out and you'll see them through the drywall. Make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. So this is not the one that we were cleaning the floor with. That one's over there. This is a different one. This is a putty knife. Um, I use the yes. scraper. Yep. And then there's another putty knife in there too, a smaller one right there. That's, mm -hmm. Yep. And then there's a flathead screwdriver in, do you see them sticking out on the side? 
Um, the black handle? Yeah. There's a flathead one in there. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Cool. So we're going to patch all of our stuff. It is gooey. You have to make the noises. No, you don't. You do. Am I right or am I not that when you're spackling or whatever you have to make the sound? No. Like they said yes. No, they said no. So, some people might say it's a little overkill. I just went ahead and covered all of those um, just to make sure better safe than sorry. I don't know. Probably not going to have any issues with it without doing that. But, like I said, somebody might tell me I did it wrong. Better safe than sorry. So. Alright, so we're going to replace the outlet and... Both of the switches, the light and the fan, uh, Molly went ahead and painted. Um, so she took the covers off. I'm going to go ahead and change these out. If you do not know how to deal with any electrical and you're not comfortable, make sure you get an electrician to come and do this part or just don't, don't deal with it. Um, just to give you a warning that uh, electrical issues can cause fire and everything like that. So this should be a GFI or GFCI um, outlet or GFCI protected. Just because it doesn't have the actual outlet here doesn't mean it's not protected. Um, it's probably connected to a different one. And so that's what we're gonna test right now. So if you don't have a fancy little tool just to tell you if it's got power or not, just find something that'll run on electricity. going to go flip the switch and make sure it's shut off. So I went ahead and hit the test switch in the other room. So confirm the power is shut off to that outlet. So now 
the outlet's done. I'm going to do these, but I had to go out and shut off the breaker. And we're going to test each of both of these. Don't just assume that the light's not working, so the fan must be off too. So they are both off. Also, make sure you have another light that you can use. So with the light switch here, I don't know if you can see, they just they went right into the back here. There's a couple ways you can get rid of it. You can stick your screwdriver in here to release them, or you can cut them. We've got plenty of wire here so we can cut it if we need to. That's the way that looks, I'm gonna cut it anyway. End up cutting it anyway. So we've been having some issues and I'm wondering, I don't like the way that that looks. So I'm wondering if that's part of the issues is that something's been going on. If there's a short, so I'm just gonna cut them. Anyway. So the new switch has the ground on the top. Don't get confused and put it upside down. Okay, pull, pull. I learned that from my electrician brother and a couple of electrician friends. Even if you're coming in the back, they didn't do that, but just get these out of the way, just snug them down. Must be easy to remember right on top. Stuff flying all over the place. And also loop it around so that the righty tighty will tighten your loop instead of loosening your loop. Again, if you're not comfortable, if you don't know how to deal with electrical, just get an electrician. Be safe. You don't want to fire. Turn the power back on. Nothing's zapping. So here's the, yay! We have power. Thank you for watching part one of this video and please make sure you do not miss part two and enjoy the outtakes. So we have three kids. Why do they have like 18 toothbrushes in this bathroom? I don't, I don't understand that. I also noticed how horrible this light is. Now, here's something interesting. Was your hot and cold water backwards? I'm guessing you're probably not going to want to cut as far out unless you're going to completely redo all of the plumbing. Uh, of... This is not plumbing. This is no. Get you... I can edit this too, by the way. I, I cut it down. Now, I have both of my daughters here that are back behind the camera being silly. <laughs> I'm glad you think you're funny. Can you make sure that mom is wants to remove the mirror? No. Did we try, try that? Let's test this. That's dumb. Welcome, thank you for joining me. Today we are... That's also dumb.